A close-up of an older man wearing headset. Another man is giving instructions to the two trialists. John L. Chudge, Microsoft UK. The aim of Cities Locked is to open up spaces and places so that people, everybody, can enjoy them more freely, enjoy them with a greater level of engagement. The older man is walking through a shopping centre with a guide dog. Phase one was really interesting about could we enable a person with sight loss to get out of the van in a way that enables them to be more independent. He is now sat outside a cafe. A waiter brings a coffee. That gave them a greater sense of mobility and, uh, and empowerment. And the work that we did last year was essentially focused first and foremost on that very, very human experience. The older man leaves the cafe. One of the core components of the experience still is your ability to get from point A to point B. The older man is walking through a busy street with his guide dog. But I think what we've been able to do in phase two is to really take that to a completely new level. And I think we describe the concept here as uh, your ability to be able to just orientate yourself at any place you want to, whether you're indoors or whether you're outdoors. You're no longer confined to the routes that you've had to learn off by heart. The older man is having the headset adjusted and wearing them in a busy street. This technology, this notion of a 3D soundscape that basically describes the world around you in, in audio. It's like audio signs. In a churchyard. Through that, you're able to build up a really rich picture of where you are and what's around you and you know, follow your own nose if something interests you. By virtue of having access to this information, it piques your curiosity. The other older man is pointing to places on the street. And you begin to wonder, well, what's down there? Gerald James, City's Unlocked Trialist. The older man is walking through a churchyard. When you're using the device, it does paint a picture of the town. It told me all the different shops on either side of the road, but it also told me the names of the streets and also the sort of compass direction. I just think it gives you sort of greater freedom, really, and um, gives you more independence. Chris Yates, Guide Dogs. The man is talking to another man. Choices essentially define who we are, and it defines us as individuals. The older man is walking through busy street with guide dog. What this technology does is give people choice and that makes a massive difference to their enjoyment in life and what makes them an individual. The other older man and the woman walking and talking in a town centre. I've seen, for example, more smiling, more laughter, more intrigue when they've heard things that they didn't know existed before, even though they might have been to this place you know, hundreds of times before, now being able to have information called out at different times, at any time, and being able to instigate a conversation rather than the other way around is, is massive. He is receiving instructions from the other two men. A key part of the experience that we've designed in phase two involves keeping, for example, your smartphone either in your pocket or in your bag. And you interact with the technology either through voice or through a, a simple device that enables you to access the core capabilities that uh, you may want to at any point, point in time. One of the things that we were keen to do was to you know, continue to explore the potential of these new different technologies. The older man is using the device. So we looked at uh, bone conduction as a way of delivering audio into a person that didn't obstruct what may be going on in the world around us. The older man is receiving instructions from the other two men. We've also looked at a headset which is over the ears. This uses traditional audio projection technology and sits over the head. Both older men are receiving instructions. But nonetheless works in response to the movement of your head, but still lets in environmental noises. Now he is using the device in a churchyard. St Mary's Church, otherwise known as Reading Minster. D Beach, Guide Dogs. The other older man and the woman in a busy street. The tech now is truly empowering. Phase two has shown me that the direction that Microsoft and Guide Dogs have taken with a broader, richer experience 
it is about getting from A to B, but sometimes when you've been doing that for a long time and there hasn't been a C or a D or an E, it becomes restrictive and almost without knowing, a whole new world has opened up. Both older men are receiving instructions. John L. Chudge, Microsoft UK. We've got to be bold. We've got to be ambitious. A tourist is wearing the headset in the museum. So thinking about tourists, for example, going to um, a venue or a place of interest and you know, having this really rich audio layer on top of what you're able to see, for example, means you've got a far more rewarding, far more fulfilling experience. The older man is walking through a shopping center with guide dog. I think from a Microsoft point of view, this project in many ways encapsulates our new mission, our new vision. It's ultimately about how can technology help people do the things that they care about. The older man is receiving instructions from the other two men. Be more productive, achieve more. And as a result of that, you know, have more fulfilling lives at home and at work. The other older man and woman in a busy street. The older man is wearing the headset in the street. 